Hi there, my name is Kent C. Dodds, and I would like to take a moment to talk with you a little bit about how open source has made me and the stuff I make better as a software engineer. Uh, this is a bunch of stuff about me, and you can check out these things at my slides, uh, slides.com slash Kent C. Dodds slash OSS dash better. Now, uh, before I begin, I'd like to just start out with some expectations. So this is about how it makes me and my software better. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about how to write open source software necessary or how to make your project super popular. So if that's what you're looking for, um, I actually have other things um, that are all about that and I've got some resources at the end that you can check out. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. So how, oh my, emoji messed up real bad. Oh well, how has it made me better? Well, here are a couple of things. It's helped me to improve my development skills, so the, the hard skills uh, the side of me. So uh, first off, it helps me in understanding and learning from code that I don't write. And I get that from work. Um, I, I work with several other people, and they um, write code in different ways and use different patterns and things. But my, um, the amount of people that I have to learn that from is significantly increased when I have the entire world of developers that I can learn from in the open source software world. And I can't like overstate that, uh, the value of learning from other people. And then it also helps me learn how to integrate my code with code I didn't write. And a really big piece of this is um, because it's open source and I can't just like throw my code in there and, and we all you know run happy with the new release, I have to convince people that my changes are uh, valid and important and, and useful. And so um, I'm uh, getting reviews on my pull requests and feedback, and that has been invaluable to me as an open source software developer. And then um, I get a lot of experience using various tools and language features, frameworks, things that I wouldn't actually have taken the time or had the time to do otherwise. I get opportunities to use those things in open source. And so I get introduced to a lot of different tools and, and different techniques I, uh, and ways to, to use things. And I either appreciate the tools that I have or I envy the tools that other people have. And uh, it, it gives me an opportunity to learn and grow in that way. And so improving my development skills um, is a huge part of what um, open source and contributing to open source does to make me a better software engineer. So it also helps me improve my interpersonal skills. So um, being able to communicate effectively with a team that's distributed uh, from the perspective of locations as well as priorities. So lots of people in open source are just doing it out of the goodness of their heart. Most of them um, have some specific use case uh, at first at least, um, but over time maybe they, uh, they change and now they're just doing it just because they enjoy doing it. Um, or maybe they have that specific use case and anything outside of that use case, they're not going to be really motivated. And so uh, being able to uh, take the people who have your priorities or um, you know, taking your priorities and making them a priority into, in the project um, requires a great deal of communication and communicating effectively. In addition, lots of times the people that you're working with are in a totally different time zone, sometimes on the opposite side of the world. And so the skills that I have learned um, by working and collaborating in open source has really helped me uh, develop my skills as a remote worker, which I'm, I am working remote now. And uh, those skills are really valuable, even if you're not a remote worker, being able to uh, work uh, with a lot of people um, with these different uh, locations and priorities. Um, so also how to ask proper questions. So as I'm using these open source projects, uh, I you, I've learned pretty quickly how to get answers to my questions and it often involves a fair bit amount of work on my end uh, to get my questions answered. And also if you're just a little bit empathetic and sympathetic to the um, people who are answering your questions, you realize that like, you're not paying them to do this most of the time. If you are paying them, it's a different story. But um, if you're not paying them to do these, uh, answer these questions, then it, um, you just need to realize that like maybe you could ask a better question or, or put a little more context into your question. And so uh, doing this a lot has really improved my ability to ask questions and that helps me in my day job as well. And then 
on the flip side, as a maintainer of open source, um, I learn how to get answers from uh, those who are asking me questions. So I learn how to um, empathize with the people who are asking the question and how to, to pull a little bit more information out of them and encourage them maybe to um, uh, provide more context, um, work a little bit harder to dig a little deeper to figure out what the core problem is. And once I've gotten them to do that, then um, I can kind of usher them into the uh, contribution side of things, the, the, the code contribution, uh, fixing the problem, or even just documenting, uh, you know, the, a workaround or something. And so um, th these skills um, have really helped me also in the workplace and, and just like really in being a good person. Um, so yeah, getting into open source has really helped me improve my interpersonal skills. Uh, another thing that's kind of as a side, um, it's really helped me to get noticed. Uh, I, I'm pretty confident that my contributions in open source have had a, a direct impact on my ability to get the jobs that I want. Um, and so, I, in fact, at, at PayPal, at my current job, it was a big part of my interview process uh, with my director. He asked me a lot about my open source contributions. So um, I know that it was a, an important part of me getting my current job. So um, being able to contribute to open source and being involved in open source is a total privilege, and I'm, I'm so grateful that I've had that opportunity. Um, but if you can convince your manager to make it part of your day job, which is what I've done, um, I, I spend a fair amount of my uh, actual work hours working on open source, um, then uh, you can like have your cake and eat it too. So how has it made the stuff I make better? So the other side of the coin here. So first off, documentation is way better. I don't know about you, but when I look at internal uh, tools at my company, um, not to like, and this isn't specific to PayPal, any company I've been to, internal tools are very rarely documented well. And it's a, a real pain. So if you can take that thing and turn it into an open source thing, all of a sudden the engineers working on it are going to be um, documenting things a lot better because you want to show your best face um, and like, especially when you're, you know, trying to represent the company or, or when you're, um, out there in the open for anybody to see the documentation is going to be a lot better. And in, in addition, uh, you'll get contribute, uh, contributions that can help improve the documentation as well. So open source has made the uh, stuff I make have better documentation. Um, finding and fixing bugs, bugs is super improved when I open source my stuff. Um, so like Downshift is way more accessible. Downshift is a library that I wrote uh, for creating um, autocomplete um, experiences and, and drop downs and things. It's way more accessible because I open sourced it and got a lot of feedback on that. Um, and the, the API uh, is improved and, and I discover subtle bugs that I, I never would have caught until a user reported those. And that's uh, not, not good. So um, there's a quote that is, given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. So um, that imagery that um, it's, it's much easier to find a bug that's shallow. And if you have enough people looking at something, then um, it'll be easier to find those shallow bugs. And that comes from Eric Raymond in The Cathedral and the Bazaar. A very interesting um, idea that I uh, suggest you go give that a look. Um, another thing is ideas come from others to greatly improve the software. So um, the, uh, for example, I just released a testing library for React and <clears throat> initially I encouraged everybody to use a particular API um, because I, I thought it was superior to all other ways of doing things. And then somebody uh, uh, mentioned to me that, hey, like, I actually think that's a really bad idea and, and you could do much better with um, these other collections of APIs. And um, having given it some thought, I realized, yeah, that's totally right. And I added those APIs and, and now encourage those. And I don't discourage the old one. The old one's still better than alternatives. But um, these uh, this new idea uh, that I, I got from this other uh, contributor um, really improved that library. And in fact, in this very same library, this all happened in the last week. Um, another person mentioned, hey, you have this one API and it's great, but we could enhance it a little bit to, to do a little bit more. And now we have a much better, much more capable API that I'm really excited about. So ideas um, in open source just like flood into your projects and make your projects much better when there are more eyes to look at it, uh, more use cases uh, to, to deal with there. 
Um, as kind of a part of that, I also learned where to draw lines at the abstraction. So um, it's much easier to say no now and yes later than to say yes now and backtrack on that decision later. Um, and so with my earlier libraries, if somebody said, hey, um, I'm not going to use this unless it has like it satisfies my use case and it needs X feature, I'd say, oh, great. Uh, like I'm just buying users uh, with, you know, expanding this abstraction pretty soon your uh, project, like you lose total control of it. And so I, I've learned through sad experience of, of where the good lines for my abstraction are. And um, that applies to not just my open source work, but like all of my projects. Um, it it Im helps me to improve my um, ability to draw lines around abstractions within uh, work projects as well. Um, but as, as you do this in open source, your projects will become much more, um, uh, it, it's kind of like the, the Linux philosophy, you know, uh, it does one thing and it does it really well. Um, but it, it helps you define the scope of your project and, and uh, keep that project to that scope. And it's much easier for you to say, um, no, not right now. Maybe you can like fork this or, or build um, some utility to make that experience better. And if that gets some traction, then maybe we can talk about this again. And so that, that has really been a huge part of open source for me too. Um, and then finally, it's a lot easier to build and test a, the component or the whatever this open source project is in isolation from the rest of your app. So I have a lot of um, uh, open source projects that originated in a, a project at work or uh, a side project. And then I was able to carve that out into a, this um, isolated piece and it was just so much easier to develop that because I, I can write tests and they iterate faster. I can um, have a, a very specific build for this uh, specific component. And so um, with fewer concerns around this one project that I've extracted comes a simpler setup and improved coverage for the project. Um, on top of all that, it just makes you feel good. I feel good contributing to open source. I feel like I'm giving back to the community in an important and meaningful way. And so I'm really happy to contribute to the open source community in this way. And I, I want to encourage other people to do the same. So that is why I'm participating in Node.js. It's a one day um, JavaScript fundamentals, hands-on training and workshops. Um, mine is about JavaScript, um, but it's more generally about um, open source. Uh, it, it is, sorry, it is specific about like how to open source a JavaScript uh, project but um, it, uh, it's less on the fundamentals of, of JavaScript, the language, where these others from Kyle Simpson, um, very much more fundamental, Bianca and Jem um, also have really awesome fundamental trainings. Um, each training is, I, I think we're, each of us are two hours long, um, and it's, so it's all day and it's online. So uh, we do have a limit, only 50 people will be able to, to participate in these trainings. Um, but I think that you'll really, really enjoy these. I'm really excited about my training. I've, I've actually given uh, forms of this training several times, and um, I think that you'll really in, enjoy this. So um, with that, I have a couple of resources here for you. I'm not going to tell you what those YouTube videos are. Um, I'll leave that to your um, experimentation. I probably should have Rickrolled you all. I promise these aren't Rickrolls, but I should have. If you go, well, hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll update this to add a Rickroll. Anyway, um, yeah, so definitely check out these resources if you want to get into open source. Um, I do a lot of work to help people get into open source, and so I, lots of resources for you. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you, and I hope to see you at Node.js.